In this episode, we're talking the death of the Note 7, the made by Google smartwatches that might be coming, and WD's new hardware. This is Tech Weekly. So starting off with Saturday's news, Kodak accidentally tweeted a leak for their phone, which should be coming in the, in the near future. It should be coming on October the 20th. So they quickly took down this tweet, and there's actually a website that's up, which is just saying under construction at the moment. In the next piece of news, we heard that Google Chrome is going to be becoming a lot more memory efficient. So as of Google Chrome 55, Google Chrome should be using around 50% percent of the memory that previous versions used and it should just be a lot more memory efficient. This is how we currently stand although they are going to be making a lot of optimizations between now and when it releases in December so you never know it might even get better. The next piece of news which isn't really news as such but it's something that's just um, good to know anyway. Paint for Windows 10 is going to be getting a major redesign. It's going to work a lot more better on touchscreen devices. It's going to look a whole lot more Windows 10-y, I guess you could say. And it's just going to look a whole lot more modern because Paint hasn't basically changed in ages. Moving on to Sunday's news, Germany is calling for a ban on combustion cars by 2020. And yeah, they're basically doing this to help um, reduce pollution. They don't even want hybrid cars on the road. They want basically electric cars such as Tesla cars or cars that run on hydrogen fuel and they're also pushing for the EU to actually make this a legislation that they pass for all of their countries although obviously yeah in England it's not gonna happen because we'll be out of the EU by then anyway and talking about electric cars and Tesla Tesla is actually gonna be um, announcing a product on October the 17th so no one knows what this product is yet but they just released this tweet about it so yeah we have just got to basically just sit back and watch and see what they announce on that day and on Sunday, um, basically three more Note 7s exploded. So but basically they're not selling Note 7s anymore. They're just out of production. They're asking people to return them. Some people don't want to return them. And yeah, basically the Note 7 is dead. I'm not going to mention it at all after this week's episode. I must have been like four episodes or whatever I've mentioned it in. Take it like this. If they're using your phone in GTA as a replacement for a bomb, then you know that it's gone too far and you just need to stop selling. But anyway, moving over to Monday's news, the Apple Watch has been banned from UK cabinet meetings because they're scared that Russians are spying on them. So basically, they were apparently spying on the Democratic National Committee in the US. So the UK is scared that they're going to do that in their meetings, so they banned Apple Watches there because they've got a microphone and stuff in them. So this is all good and all, but it actually reminded me of a kind of nice video that I watched a bit ago by MatPat from Game Theory. He did a whole video about hacking and how if you hack one device it can hack another one, and he kind of linked it to Watch Dogs 2 because they were sponsoring him, but it didn't really feel sponsored at all. It's like, um, it's very much based in real life, so it is an interesting video. I'll have it down in the, in the description for you to watch. But anyway, moving on, Facebook also launched a Slack competitor, which is called Workplace. Even though it's by Facebook, Facebook and Workplace are two completely different things. You need an entirely different account to use it, and it's just basically for work people. Workplace is going to be something that you're going to have to pay for. It's going to be between $1 to $3 per user, which is better than the $6.67 that you have to pay for Slack if you're going for their standard package. So yeah, this is basically going to do everything that Slack does, other than one thing, which is having the whole document interface and letting you edit documents and stuff on it. SignEngine also announced that they're going to be breaking up their SignEngine OS into little kind of packages that they're going to license to phone makers. So um, yeah, before they were trying to sell SignEngine OS, they sold it, that, well not sold it, they licensed it, sorry, to people like OnePlus in the OnePlus One, but they backstabbed them and then they then they were wondering why nobody else is trusting them. By the way, this is SignEngine OS. West, which is completely different CyanogenMod. mod. CyanogenMod mod is actually maintained by a community and that's still going fine, that's still going totally fine. So those two things are completely different so you don't have to worry about that. On Tuesday Sprint announced that they're going to be giving internet enabled devices to over a million students in um, America. So they're wanting to do this over the next five years and they're going to do this by giving them either laptops, smartphones, internet hotspot devices and a whole other things like that. They're going to try and be open about it and let people kind of choose which one they want and yeah they're basically going to be doing this obviously to people who already don't have internet access and they're going to be giving them a three gigabyte data plan included with it and yeah they're hoping that they're basically going to be able to build brand loyalty by doing this so that when these kids grow up and they want to pick a smartphone they'll go with Sprint that's basically what their whole strategy is behind it but they're not just giving these internet devices to students just to kind of use and stuff they're giving it to them so that they'll be able to do internet related homework as more stuff from schools is moving online 
which is actually a really good thing. And WD has showed off their new hard drives, which look just like an Xbox One. That was like the first thing that came into mind. But anyway, getting back to this. So basically they're gonna be in the same sizes and stuff. They just look different. And yeah, there's gonna be a whole range of colors. They're gonna be a bit more expensive, I think, to buy, but I'm gonna have a link to their page in the description down below. The external hard drives isn't the only thing that WD are starting to offer. They're also starting to offer SSDs, which they just didn't do in the past. So they're gonna have green and blue ones. The blue ones are kind of more high performance and they're gonna be available in 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes and, uh, and one terabyte. And there's gonna be the green ones, which are gonna be available in 120 gigabytes and 240 gigabytes. So these are just being released to select customers at the moment. So the blue ones are just being offered to select customers at the moment and they should have come out to more people soon and the green ones are going to be available later on in the year to again select customers in select places. So there's not really any word for sure as to when they'll be coming out to just everyone but they should be coming soon I imagine. And Comcast, the company that everyone doesn't seem to like in America, I don't know because I'm in England, was fined $2.3 million by the FCC over basically charging people for stuff that they're not using. So it seems that even when people people try to decline some things, Comcast was still charging them for it and there were some things that they just like added onto their bill without even telling them about it. They just like have a package show up at the door and that was something they had to start paying for. Now they have to be more transparent with their customers. They have to basically tell customers when they're going to start charging them and obviously the customers have to agree to that and they can't just like send a package to someone's door of like, I don't know, some other device and be like, you have to pay for this. Samsung has started selling, sending out um, these five proof boxes for the Note 7 to go into for people to return them. So these boxes are basically like two boxes, a box within a box, and then there's this like liner thing, and then there's gloves. Because the outer box is actually coated in ceramic fiber, which is supposed to basically prevent it from breaking if this thing explodes inside it, and some people are irritated by that, they're supposed to like use the gloves to like open it, and it's basically like a whole like medical procedure or something just to get this phone in the bag that goes in the box, that goes in the other box, that's sealed, and this thing can't even go by aeroplane, it has to go by sea or land, like they're really being strict with all of this. Or you can just give the phone back to a carrier and they'll just do it for you. The first self-driving car to hit the road in public in the UK has basically hit the road in public. So um, it's only travelled at like 5 miles per hour, it happened in Milton Keys and obviously it wasn't on any public roads or anything which probably wasn't for this whole thing of the car might hit someone but it's probably because Drivers behind it would get like super annoyed and they'd probably like swerve around it and hit something themselves. It apparently avoided pedestrians and stuff like that, who like the, like the few people that were around the area and stuff. So yeah, it seemed to work out pretty well. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to self-driving cars because I don't like a lot of people's driving and I would like to just like sit in a car like in the future and just like let the car drive itself to be honest. And Google has also bought Famebit which is basically this website that lets content creators meet up with brands and the brands can like sponsor them and then content creators can also collaborate with other creators through the platform and it's just a really nice platform. It's not really that helpful for me yet because I haven't really got the exposure or audience or anything for it yet even though I'm actually on the website but yeah, um, Google's bought it, so this should make brands basically see it as a lot more kind of authentic and it should just help Famebit a lot. Google isn't going to um, directly tie their services together or anything, Famebit's going to stay separate. But yeah, this is definitely a great thing for Famebit. On Wednesday, HP announced a new notebook, monitor, as well as all-in-one PC. So their notebook, the NV Notebook 13, comes with a Intel KB Lake processor. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it has Windows Hello support, and it has a slightly altered design. The monitor is 4K, it's 27 inches, which I think the old one was like 32, which was like way too big. It has dual HDMI, HDMI. It has dual HDMI, it has a mini display port, and it has USB-C. And the 27 inch all-in-one PC has the same 16 gigabytes of RAM and Cable Lake processor. So if you want to see any more of these specs, then they'll all be in the description down below. Amazon also launched its Music Unlimited in the US on Wednesday and this is basically supposed to go up against Spotify and Apple Music and all those sorts of things. So for Prime members this is going to be $8 which is less than the $10 which you'd pay for Spotify or something like that. And it's actually going to only be $4 if you've got an Echo and you only want to play music on the Echo. So this is just supposed to be a compliment to Prime Music which Prime members actually get for free. It's going to offer a whole lot more music. So this is supposed to be a compliment to Prime Music which is already available to Prime members. But this is supposed to have a whole load, load more songs, it's going to have offline support and it's going to have lyrics too and there's actually been a whole new redesigned app around this which 
downloads music that it thinks that you are gonna want to listen to and it does that all in the background and stuff so yeah I'll leave the app in the description but remember it's US only and again with the Samsung news but it's something different so Samsung doesn't actually know why the Note 7 is exploding and this is a really big problem because the thing is I've been testing it They've been trying to recreate it and they couldn't recreate it. But basically, this is an issue because they're going to be making more phones in the future. So if they can't find out why the Note 7's been exploding and stuff like the S7 Edge is totally fine, then they're going to be in an issue because they can't make a new phone, obviously, until they realize, until they find out why it's not working. Yeah, let's just hope Samsung finds out soon because it was they're just in a mess at the moment, basically. And HoloLens pre-orders also went live in, the, in Europe today. So it's available for these prices and it's going to be shipping in November when you should be able to get it. And Apple is also opening up R&D centers in Shenzhen, which is in China. So um, they basically want to be closer to their suppliers in China. And they also want to strengthen ties with local partners as well as universities there. So that they can just basically make products easier and stuff like that. And on Thursday, Steam showed off the Vive controller prototypes. So these controllers have a few improvements from the previous Vives where they can detect when people open and close their hands. But apparently it still isn't as good as the Oculus Touch because you can't do that whole um, thing where you like don't have to be holding it all the time and stuff to make it feel more immersive. You always have to be holding these controls. But I mean, other than that, it doesn't actually seem that bad to be honest. And there isn't any word on release yet, but I imagine if it's in prototype stage, it might be a few months before they come out. And Samsung is offering $100 for people to bring in their Note 7s because people are still so insistent in not, in not bringing in their Note 7s even though they might explode in their face and stuff. So Samsung is basically saying bring back your Note 7, we're going to give you the refund as well as $100 on top. There's actually kind of a twist with this because they're only going to give you $100 towards the purchase of a new Samsung device. Although if you want to go with a new, with an iPhone or another Android device, then they're only going to give you $25. So they are still giving you something, they're not just basically just giving you a refund and that's it. But they really, really want people to give in these Note 7s and they just don't really want to. I don't really know why. I mean, I kind of do know why because the phone's great and all of that. But I mean, if it's going to, if it might blow up in your face, I mean, which one's better kind of thing. And Periscope have announced that you're going to be able to stream from almost anything to Periscope. So you're going to be able to stream from drones, which you already could do with DJI drones, but you're going to be able to from other drones. You're going to be able to do it from your computer and um, through stuff like XSplit and OBS and like that. And from a lot of other devices, really. So basically, as long as they can stream to a URL, you're going to be able to stream to Periscope. And it seems that Apple is also thinking about using e-ink keyboards in the future, which will basically mean that the keyboards can have keys that kind of change on demand based on what kind of program you're using. So they already have that um, kind of LED touch bar thing which is supposed to change based on if you're listening to music on Spotify or if you're doing something on PowerPoint maybe or something on Photoshop or something. It's supposed to show relevant things to that. But it looks like they also might be thinking of doing it to the keyboard. So they're looking to do this with Sonda who kind of designed these keyboards in the past. This obviously isn't going to be coming anytime soon. It's not going to be coming in the next iteration of Max probably which I imagine will be releasing pretty soon. Come in 2018, for example, or maybe late 2017, I guess. Friday, there's rumors that the made by Google watches may be coming early next year. So it's thought that they might come alongside Android Wear 2.0, which has been delayed from, it should have been around this time that it comes out, over to um, early next year. So it would make sense for them to release alongside Android Wear 2.0. I'm looking forward to see if they'll be any good, but apparently the bigger one's got three buttons on it and it's just got a larger face. The smaller one's got one button, but apparently the large one has a heart rate sensor and a few other things on it, which the small one hasn't got. So I'm looking forward to see how, um, well, what the watches are going to be like if they actually do release early next year. And the Instagram app has also came to Windows, well, kind of, sort of. So it's only coming to tablets pretty much because to actually post anything to Instagram from, um, from Windows, you have to have a rear-facing camera on your computer and it has to have a touchscreen. They haven't brought it to the iPad yet either, so, I don't know, I, I, Instagram's just been slow with this whole thing. And Apple announced a date for the Apple Watch Nike Plus Edition, so it's going to be coming on, on October the 28th. And if you don't know, the Nike, Nike Edition is basically going to have some exclusive apps on it. It's going to have an exclusive band that's going to be a part of it. And there's going to be, yeah, just a lot of kind of Nike related stuff on it. It's going to be available for $369 for the 38mm version 
or it's going to be starting at $399 for the 42mm version. And keeping on the topic of Apple, Apple is removing security tethers from the iPhone in their Apple stores. So they're doing this because they're not really that needed. I mean, there's no cameras or anything in Apple. So in theory, people could just walk out with the phone. But obviously, if Apple sees that a phone um, is missing, then they're going to be able to instantly track that phone. They're going to be able to lock it down, put it in lost mode. So the person will just have a useless phone pretty much. And Sony is apparently going to be making mobile games. So they're not going to be making them anytime soon. They're going to be coming by mid-2018. They've just became more serious about these games because of stuff like Mario coming to the iPhone and the whole Pokemon Go thing which just kind of blew up. They want to have a, a piece of that pie so they're going to be bringing games in mid-2018. But yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Be sure to comment down below if you think I missed anything or anything like that, which I hope I didn't. So I hope you all are liking these Tech Weekly series too. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on them in the comments down below. Um, if you're watching this far, then thanks for watching and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.